Welcome. This video is going to take a look at how we now use the idea of the mole, this really huge amount of atoms that allows us a big enough sample to be able to work with and measure, and the idea of dimensional analysis, and use this all to actually be able to measure the mass of our products and reactants. So a couple new terms that we're going to get familiar with in this video are atomic mass and molar mass. Atomic mass is the mass of one atom of a specific element. So pretty much what it sounds like, the mass of an atom. And when you state the mass of an atom, you also have to know which element it is because remember, elements gain mass as they get bigger because there's more stuff in them, more protons, more neutrons specifically. So atomic mass is measured in this unit called an atomic mass unit, or AMU. And one AMU is a really, really tiny piece of a gram, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. And if you remember, a gram is about the mass of one M&M. &M. That's a really small amount. It's also, one AMU is also about the same mass as a proton or a neutron. In fact, unless you're working in some really high-tech chemistry physics stuff, we can say an AMU is the same mass as a proton or a neutron. Now, most hydrogen atoms have just one proton and no neutrons, and the average atomic mass for hydrogen is 1.008 AMU. And so when you look on the periodic table, you will see 1.008 or possibly 1.01 listed as the atomic mass for hydrogen. And in fact, you'll see the atomic mass for every element on the periodic table. So then the other idea we want to talk about, the other definition, is this idea of molar mass. And just like atomic mass is the mass of one atom, molar mass is the mass of one mole of atoms or molecules. So again, you need to know what atom or what molecule you're talking about, and then that's the mass of a whole mole's worth, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is going to be in grams per mole. So if you want to find the molar mass, we would need to take the atomic mass of an atom in AMU, times the mass of an AMU in grams, remember that was something times 10 to the minus 24th, times the number of atoms in a mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Let's take a look at that for hydrogen. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.008 AMU, and we know that one AMU weighs 1.66 grams, or 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. So when I multiply that, I see that one hydrogen atom has this little teeny mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24th. So now if I wanted the molar mass, I can take the mass in grams for hydrogen times the number of atoms in a mole, and I get 1.008 grams per mole. But now wait a minute. One atom weighs 1.008 AMU, and one mole weighs 1.008 grams, like those are the same number. Well, the really cool thing is, it happens for every single element. The atomic mass and the molar mass are the same number, it's just the unit that tr it changes. So instead of having to multiply by Avogadro's number and by the little tiny 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th, you don't have to do that. Avogadro deliberately came up with his number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, to be equal to one mole. He came up with that very strange, very large number so that it would work out exactly like this. So the periodic tells you both the mass in AMU for an atom or the mass in grams for an entire mole. True for every single element on there. So. Now, if I ask you the question, how much does one atom of copper weigh, you simply look at the periodic table, and you see that it's given, its mass is given as 63.546, and these uh, decimals might vary depending upon the table you're looking at. But my unit, since I'm asking about one atom, needs to be AMUs. How much do 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms weigh? Well, by now you should be recognizing that as Avogadro's number, or one mole. So again, I look at the periodic table, and it's still 63.546, but now my unit is grams. 
Which would weigh more, a mole of helium or a mole of zinc? Well, if I look at the periodic table, I see that helium has a molar mass of 4.003 grams, and I'm just going to put HE down here as a subscript so I know I'm talking about helium. And when I look at zinc, I see that zinc weighs 65.39 grams per mole of zinc, so obviously zinc weighs more. Here's a couple more examples of what we can do with this information. How much would 2.96 moles of chromium weigh? Now I need to do some calculating. And unlike when we're counting particles and moles, it matters what I'm talking about because even though a mole always has the same number of particles in it, particles don't all weigh the same. So I'm going to use the same method as I was before. I'm going to write down what I have. And again, I'm going to put the um, abbreviation for chromium there so I remember what element I'm talking about. I have 2.96 moles of chromium. I want to know how many grams of chromium that is. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my ratio here, my conversion factor with what I want, grams, over what I have, moles. And I know one mole of chromium, if I look at my periodic table, weighs 51.996 or 52.00. So I go ahead and take the 2.96 times the 52 grams, and I see that it weighs 153.92, or I could round to three sig figs, 154 grams. How many moles are in 1,546 grams of chromium? Write down what you have, like grams of chromium. What do you want? You want to know moles of chromium, so set a ratio up of what you have, what you want, want over half, and I know one mole is 52 grams. So now I'm going to take the 2546 and divide by 52. And this is 48.96 moles of chromium. So the important numbers here are, just like before, we know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, whether those are atoms or molecules or whatever. But now we also know one mole equals x grams, and we just get x from the periodic table. I can't put a number there because it depends on what the element is, but if you use your periodic table, you've got all kinds of numbers. You have 92 different natural elements that you can plug this number in. So you can set up two different equalities for each of these um, equalities. So we convert 3.57 moles of aluminum into the mass in grams. And go ahead and pause here and give this a try, and I'll start working on my solutions. So I have 3.57 moles. I want grams. This is moles of aluminum. So I put grams over moles. I look up the mass for one mole of aluminum, and I see that it is 26. 0.962. And when I take 3.57 times 26.92 and round that to three sig figs, I'm coming up with 96.1 grams of aluminum. 42.6 moles of silicon. Same process. I'm going to put grams over moles, but now when I look up my one mole of silicon, I see that silicon weighs 28.086. If your periodic table only goes to two decimal places, that's just fine. Yeah, when I multiply 42.6 times 28.086, I'm coming up with 1,196, and technically then I should round this to 1,120, but I'll just leave it as 1,196 grams of silicon. We're not going to get too particular about sig figs. I'll be thrilled if your version is correctly. So then, if we go the other direction, how many moles 
or each of the following quantities. So now I'm starting with grams. In the first case, 300 grams of sulfur. So go ahead and pause and see if you can change grams back to moles. So since I want moles, I'm going to set my conversion factor with moles over grams. One mole of sulfur, looking at my table, is 32.066 grams. And when I punch that into the calculator, 300 divided by 32.066, I'm getting 9.3557. And I actually have... Uh, four sig figs given to me, so I would take this to 93.9.356, and that's moles of sulfur. So 25.5 grams of silver. Again, I want moles, I have grams, so I look up the molar mass of silver. Silver is a fairly heavy element, 107.87. So 25.5 isn't going to be much, it's going to be a little less than a quarter mole. 0.236, hanging on to my three sig figs, moles of silver. And then for my last try it, I've asked you to determine the number of atoms in each of the following. Now, in reality, this isn't something we do often, but it is sometimes you need to do it, um, especially when you're looking at water quality, you need to know the parts per million of chemicals in the water. So my hint to you is you'll need to make more than one conversion to reach your final answer. If you remember, we know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So it's a little messy. Let me do better than that. Times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles. And we know that one mole equals x grams. We don't know anything about grams to particles, except we can convert either one to moles. So that's what you're going to need to do. So go ahead and pause here and see what you could come up with. So as I started my solution, I went back to the previous ones we'd done. We just converted 300 grams to moles and 25.5 grams of silver to moles. So now that I know moles, I can go ahead and make my second conversion of 9.5. 356 moles of sulfur, and I know that moles and particles is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole. So I take my 9.356 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I come up with an answer of 5.63 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Actually, this is atoms here for sulfur. And then, since 25.5 grams of silver is 0.236 moles, again, I know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles or atoms in one mole of anything. So 0.236 times 6.02 is going to give me 1.42 times 10 to the 23rd atoms.